Hey, good evening, Galleon. This is Mayor Tom O'Leary uh, here on another Monday night, August 2nd. Time ticks away, uh, and uh, over the next several days, I think the voters and the committee will get an idea of who's going to be on the ballot. Um, this fall, I had an opportunity to get out and meet with some people um, uh, in collecting petitions. Found out a couple of things. Something that is, I guess, widely known. Uh, by people who listen to this live stream or uh, who I've conversed with with over the last couple three years is uh, that Bueller's is in town um, so or it's coming to town rather so we've had some uh, follow-up communication they're talking about having a uh, coming soon sign and as I had mentioned one other time on uh, these Monday nights what I expect them to to do is are some hiring fairs and uh, it's, it's a pretty neat company. I'm, I'm not sure of all the terms of their uh, employee ownership and when you become vested, but it'll be neat to have the employees uh, at Bueller's, um, you know, their, their owner employees. So the, the level of service and all that goes with that, one can expect to be uh, pretty good. The other thing that uh, at being out and around in Galleon over the last, uh, today rather, is, um, street paving has started and so uh, there's a, a, a list a, a map of all the streets uh, what we're basically going to do and the and the company started milling uh, what I would call in the north east corner of Carmel in that area uh, I saw a milling machine on Liberty uh, near Sherman uh, what I what I saw was that those streets didn't have a whole lot of base. So one of the things I kind of expect to, to come in uh, to our office over the next couple of days is what are we going to do about some of these subsurface uh, areas. And, and so we'll, we'll try to manage any changes in costs. But uh, some of those older streets, residential streets, it's been a while since any pavings happened. And for the longest time, uh, they, they did something called overlay. They didn't mill it off, they just overlaid it. And that's why in many cases the curb, there isn't much what's called reveal on the curb, or in many cases there's no curb at all uh, because we've paved and paved and paved. So over the last handful of years we've um, made a determination, except in the rarest cases because of drainage issues, we mill off and then fill it. Uh, with new asphalt. So some of those bases when you do that are not um, as solid as you'd hoped and so we'll probably have a little bit of change of cost on some of those. Uh, they'll move from that northeast quadrant um, over kind of in a uh, what would be a counterclockwise direction and end up over in Henry and John Street in that area over there. So I think you can, anyone who's watching can see the the chart of streets. Uh, just mention quickly that how the, to the question like, well, how do you come up with those streets? You know, do you have friends and relatives that live on them? And uh, I have friends everywhere, and only a few relatives. So yeah, there's always friends. But the point of it is that we have that bubble up. We have the staff in the street department relay that up uh, to the superintendent, and it's discussed here in our office. And then in the last couple of years, we've we've done everything we could to share that draft list with council and get uh, input from them if they have a particular um, section of a, of a street in their ward or, or at large. That's how, the, that's how that list of about 300 and, I don't know, 25, I'm, I, I think that's a little bit low. It's generally between 325 and 400,000. <clears> that comes from your state gas tax, uh, the city share of that and all of that $20 license plate fee uh, that you pay per license. So that's where the money to do the local paving uh, comes from and we've been operating that way with uh, local, uh, our local share of state gas tax and then with our local license plate fee. Oh gosh, for the last eight years it seems like that's been what we've tried to pave. Um, so anyways, that's a, a big project that uh, is uh, initiating this week. We think it's a couple of weeks. Uh, while I stay on, on uh, roadway uh, topics, the 598 project, uh, we are setting up a date 
uh, with ODOT and the contractor and sort of a pre-construction meeting uh, with the public, give you all an idea of what the timing of which phases, basically what will get done this year, and then a preview of what one can expect um, as we totally wide, reconstruct and widen uh, everything from uh, Carter Drive or Arby's north out to just north of the Brant Road uh, 598 intersection. Big project. Um, it's going to be an all hands on deck, and it's one that uh, it's uh, one that I you know feel comfortable about having uh, managing this kind of project because of doing a lot of these kinds of of urban widenings and uh, intersection projects. Now it seems like many years ago, but uh, in, the, in the years I was at ODOT. So I'm looking forward to the project. It'll be this year and then stretch over into next year. And um, uh, people who use that North Corridor, uh, we fully expect that there'll be some detouring going on. And so uh, spilling off to the east will be more traffic likely on Market, which has now been paved for the most part, and then Fairview uh, going north-south um, to kind of avoid that uh, commercial corridor that, that's going to be the work zone. So those things are, are going on in the roadway area. Um, the uh, other thing I'll mention, see if we have any questions, is um, with the recovery plan. What is it, American Recovery Plan Act? Uh, while we got a certain amount of money as a, if you will, a set aside for Galleon, uh, just to shade over a million dollars, about 1.1 million, it'll come in two allocations, if you will. I'm going to resist using the word tranche for as long as I can, but that's literally what it said in the letter. You'll get two tranches, so I'll try to get with the new bureaucratic language. In any event, we'll get 1.1 million expected right along that there was a holdback from the state or that the state would want to allocate some of those funds by their own means and methods. And so, yes, indeed, there is a, a, a multi, I believe it's $150 million that is uh, of these rescue funds that has been uh, allocated to the Department of Development and they're going to work in conjunction with the Ohio EPA to provide some pretty significant uh, grant awards uh, in the neighborhood of a maximum of five million dollars for the kinds of things coincidentally that we've been talking about the last month or two replacement of existing water lines and sewer lines major renovations or improvement to water treatment wastewater treatment plants so um, we're going to coordinate those efforts that we've been talking about with this new um, it's not new, but the information about how you apply for it is new and move as quickly through the planning process. And there's money for planning. I'm not sure I'm wild about um, taking time on that rather than having our own engineering done, but that's a detail. Uh, but certainly significant money uh, for a range of wastewater and water uh, treatment uh, projects. So anyways. Uh, that's um, new on the horizon. As I said a minute ago, it's, it really coincides nicely with, with the specific problems we've been having here with our um, water system at the water plant, the need to modernize that, and then certainly uh, some of the issues we've had with our, our collection, our sewage collection system, and the, and the pretty apparent knowledge that we're going to have some of these common sewers, the first of which we dealt with over the last few weeks, but I think there'll be a series of those, and uh, my plan would be to recommend council really focus on getting some of these uh, shared private sewers cleaned up and replaced with, uh, with public sewers and, and have the future maintenance be not in a gray area, but clearly the city's responsibility when it's a new, um, a new public sewer. So. I mean, those are some of the things that are going on. We're, we're like everyone else, chugging along, trying to deliver uh, various freeze projects. Uh, the, the, the supply chain, such as it is on, on building materials, uh, I think everywhere you turn, you hear discussion about that, or at least everywhere I turn, I hear discussion about that. 
So we're working to try to get a firm price on the replacement of the Heisey Park shelter, the main shelter there and uh, near the playground and the baseball field. Uh, we are just waiting on delivery of, of the steel for the uh, fencing. So the, as I talked about last week, dog parks are well on their way. We're going to, we're looking at, at some, uh, some basic rules of operation that we're going to have to have uh, council change our either have a new ordinance or change any existing ordinance that we have that would uh, that would regulate or try to control the the dogs and in particular one of the things is um, is making sure that kids unaccompanied by my or by adults that's just not going to happen it, that that it's a dog park the rest of the parks in town are people parks the dogs are in there and and so our our goal would be to produce a a small list of rules, easy to follow, easy to enforce, uh, but there to make sure that that, um, that people's safety uh, is kind of foremost. Uh, Matt's going to be ordering uh, one of those doggy bag dispensers, so if you don't have them, when you show up there, you'll use them. And uh, again, for the first season, this yet this fall and probably early in the next year, uh, we'll be we'll have. Um, Human public facilities probably in, in uh, the the now uh, I think we put up porta pots and then they they sort of grow they reproduce into these nice little permanent uh, restrooms so that's kind of what we'll have is a year of porta pots and then next year the year after that we should have a simple um, maybe even, it might even be our unis it might be our first dive into a unisex public restroom out there. Because I don't think the, the the volume of people wanting to use it will be that great, but you know, you know how it is when you got to go. So I would think that those those features, a water fountain, uh, we're probably going to keep uh, water on the responsibility of the owners. So if you want to bring water for your dog, that's going to be on you. And we'll see how how much of a demand there is for a for a, a trough, a drinking trough. But that won't be part of the original setup. So those are two um, uh, freeze projects. I'll rattle on one more minute about freeze projects. We have bid openings on the netting at Pico. Uh, there was a question the other night at, at council. I'm not sure if we got a picture out to the council members, but it, um, it, it I, I, I'm really happy with it. We, sh we shopped and talked to a lot of people, uh, and we found something that we think will work uh, to not block all the sunshine but make the place a lot safer, and so uh, that'll be bid out. I think I said this a week ago. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the project was begun in 21 and finished uh, next spring in terms of stringing the netting and getting ready for, uh, for the softball and youth baseball that go on out at Pico, too. Gee, it seems like that's it on freeze projects. I can't uh, think anymore. One maybe will come to me. Uh, any questions? I uh, just had one uh, request from Samantha. Oh, sure. Uh, going back to the 598 widening. Right. Uh, she said, uh, no construction during the school year, please. It is congested enough. Yeah, that's a good suggestion that I doubt if we can uh, totally comply with. What I, um, But I'll find out. And Samantha, you and others should attend. I think we'll probably have it so you can, we'll have it virtual so you can stay home and watch the public meeting. But. Uh, for many years now, I, I really believe in the value of those public meetings when it comes to highway projects. We've been living it for several years up here, trying to make this dream of a widened 598 uh, one of those, oh, that'll never happen kind of challenges. Uh, we've been trying to make it happen, and so we've been in, involved in almost a daily basis. Recognize everyone else doesn't think about it at all except maybe when they see the berm and wish somebody would get that fixed or something. People ju or, or complaining about how congested it is. People tend to just in a matter of weeks before a project starts, it dawns on them that, oh crap, that's going to that's gonna have an impact on my daily commute or on, on any time I go to Cyrus or Ontario or whatever the case may be. So um, attend that public meeting and I can almost I can almost assure you 
that there'll be some construction after the time school starts. I can almost assure you. I don't want it to go a third year. And so you're really going to need this the early construction season where kids are still in school in the fall to complete it. But um, your point of view and certainly the school transportation officials, I would expect them to be at this public meeting getting a feel for the need to or whether they should reroute. Um, but uh, once again, I imagine Hesby Drive will come in real handy. That was another bad idea. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, yeah, I had a question from Aaron. Uh, again, sure. going back to freeze projects. Then. Yeah. Um, said uh, update for the ball field at East Park, please. Yeah, I think that's uh, going to be divided up into components that will not require bidding. There'll be a, a fencing and a backstop component, a netting and a backstop component, and then the dugouts separate and then the field work kind of separately. I think that's how we hope to break the project down. You know, that's, if we can get materials, uh, that's something that I would hope would get done this fall. Uh, all of the scheduling, these baseball guys are crazy, but all of the scheduling for 22 is, will happen late this fall. All the teams that want to use that field, mostly uh, galleon-based travel teams, those, those teams will be selected and they'll start informal practice a lot sooner than one would imagine. Unless you're involved in it, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. So anyway, <clears throat> getting the field uh, ready to go this fall is necessary to be able to have it ready next spring. So that's the, that's the plan. We're not going to... We found when Heisey Park was improved that we did better breaking the project and the components than getting one big, one big uh, contractor or bidder. Anything else on that? Uh, that is all. Hey, I demo and construction. Now. I've got something. Uh, the we've been talking about it so long. Uh, my hair went gray. The the old Logan Furniture, the old uh, building on Hardingway East. We have a contractor. They are going to start the middle of August. So. I think it's been a safety concern of ours. Certainly when you're on the overpass, it's kind of an eyesore. It's not kind of, it is an eyesore. So we'll, we'll get that cleared. Um, and I've said for quite a while uh, that I think there's, there's some interesting redevelopment potential there between the building that uh, Mr. Ziger owns and the AMVETS. That whole area there has uh, got some upside potential. So first First things first, let's get the existing building demolished and then we'll go on from there. And then we've been hounding, we as in our office have, have been hounding uh, the building inspector to in turn hound the land bank about getting some more uh, money out of that to, to do some more demolition. You know, about, um, there's some significant, what we might call ice or commercial properties, and then there's some uh, residential properties that probably have seen their better days and we need to be able to take action. There's never enough money to tear down all the homes that certain people in the community think are derelict, but um, being able to chip away at it is kind of what the resources have limited us to and kind of the, we're not kind of the approach we've taken. So, got anything else? Not as of right now. Okay, I think um, I don't have a whole lot else. I think I'm, I'm drive by the old uh, Pico property. It gets more and more ready for a new spec building to be put in there. So we're still waiting to hear if we're, we've been able to secure any additional state funding for the turn lane uh, that is proposed, the left-hand northbound turn lane uh, on Brant Road that would allow traffic from the in industries that are there in what I think will be future industry that will go in at that corner. So we're planning ahead trying to get the right kind of transportation. Our pitch to the state when we made the request for the funds was, and they agreed with this, I'm certain. I don't know if we'll get funded or not. Kind of a little project in a, in a, in a field of real big deal um, urban projects, but maybe we'll fit in, maybe we'll, the right size project. But what my point was that uh, 
most of these development related transportation projects uh, have an urgency to them because they didn't fix them before the traffic started and so our pitch was let's get that turn lane in before the new industry is located while only part of the warehousing is generating traffic and while other development is getting ready to happen rather than have a traffic problem with trucks backing up and all kinds of uh, moaning and groaning and complaining about how they improve 598 but rent roads a nightmare now so we're trying to stay ahead of that get that um, extra turn lane in there before we have the, the the congestion kind of the good news about getting new industry into town so anyways I know there's a pent up desire to mayor you need to get new industry well we're you have to you have to fully set the table and I think we're getting real close in 598 uh, there are a couple of things going on at 61 that we'll talk about tomorrow night at a committee meeting primarily the rezoning of the of the commercial property that is um, out there at 61 and 30 that it has the best upside potential but uh, it looks as though um, we've got the, the private owner now is interested in developing it and that's really crucial and you really need if you have private ownership you need to have them motivated as well as having the local infrastructure there and the local private industry not industry but utilities there so it really is a matter now if we've got the landowner uh, more engaged than in the past the city needs to scare up some funds to get utilities out there and then the a galleon area will actually have an industrial park uh, what we have at 598 once Pico's cleared is enough for one or two buildings but not for what people when they think of an industrial park that we hope is more uh, in the future for the galleon area um, four or five years out in the future at 61 and 30 so anyways that's what i got uh, Don and Cindy both asked if there's any update on a grocery store. Do you want to do a, a quick synopsis? Yeah, it so is. I back? mean, I, the, the, uh, they have asked to put a sign up, a coming soon sign, a Bueller's coming soon sign. I enthusiastically said yes. And there may be some temporary sign ordinance that they have to qualify. But, uh, you know, if it's, I think it's 30 days, so we'll put it up 30 days, take it down for 10 minutes, put it back up. They also are interested in uh, doing some job fairs and identifying workers. And I said a few minutes ago, uh, Cindy and Don, that um, it's an employee-owned company. It's kind of a neat company, and I'm, uh, you know, if you've gone and shopped there, it is, you know, it's a friendly place. Uh, and and uh, one of the neat things about those people who end up working there is that it's employee-owned. So the you know the when when you have the right kind of employee-owned company, everybody is pulling together, um, and um, we'll all need to work or we'll all need to shop there so that they're profitable, so that they can earn the profit sharing that comes with employee ownership. But anyways, it's moving along pretty well. I know there's some equipment on order, uh, and um, you know, I haven't heard anything other than can you help find a place to do interviews and line people up, and so we're. We're getting pretty excited about it. I shared with the company that I, I hear um, a lot of excitement. But the reason I started there tonight, I'm talking about going out and getting petitions, the person didn't know anything about it. So, well, Dawn and Cindy who often ask about that, and Matt and folks that, that would catch this uh, live stream know we've talked about it a bunch of times, but uh, maybe not enough. So. Bueller's is still planning on coming, and the critics of Bueller's will probably find that their quality is high and their price. It's not a value place. So the, the, that part of your shopping that you do at uh, the big box stores, yeah, you might be doing that, but I, uh, you might continue to do that. But being able to have a grocery store to go to, uh, high quality name brands, and uh, particularly their emphasis on ready-made foods. I think that'll be a, uh, a two people I was talking to keep referring to we're both working moms and you get done you're tired you can run up to Bueller's here in a few months 
buy something nice for dinner, take it home, and they'll, you know, you'll be a super person, either a super dad, super mom, because you've worked all day and produced this, this awesome home-cooked meal. Wink, wink. So, anyways, that's what's going on. I think it's mid to late September, but everybody is reluctant to set dates because of the uncertainty of delivery of equipment and all these variables. But um, I, my, my hope is I can buy my turkey and all the stuffings and all that stuff that goes with Thanksgiving. So that'll be that's about as close as I'll try to peg it down. Maybe a pumpkin pie at Halloween too. So, anyways, I hope that answers it. Cindy, no, we we um, we play a supporting role. I don't think it'd be fair for the city to say that. Oh yeah, we made this happen. I'm sh darn sure, uh, darn glad it has, and we have had a, a positive role in making sure that each step is taken uh, with our support. But uh, it'll be a nice win for the community, and let's just not jinx it by over talking. All right, what else you got? Anything? That was it. Okay, I've got a, not a whole lot. We're, we're uh, moving along. It's a funny time of the year where uh, you can begin to see some adjustments that will have to be made in this year's budget, some things that were misestimated or some things that are running ahead of schedule for one reason or another. But it's also really the time when you, when you start to look at expenditures in 22, costs in 22, so it's the, the budgeting process that you'll see at City Council in November and December really is beginning to start now. Uh, it'll start in earnest after Labor Day and uh, we, you know we have some work to do in the water fund, maybe in the sewer fund, but, um, but the rest of the funding at this point seems to be so, uh, holding solid, so I'll knock on wood and uh, and say that uh, here at City Hall we'll begin to look at the 22 budget sooner than later and uh, try to keep you informed. I don't see any major surprises. Let's see what else can I say? A couple things. Went to Safety Town graduation. That was fun. I met the three uh, new police officers who were kind of waiting for all their paperwork and waiting for their uniforms to get here before they move into the full training period. One of the guys is two or three inches taller than me and about crushed my hand when he shook it. So all three of them seem like uh, really solid people. And once again, the, they keep hiring these younger and younger people. I don't know what's wrong with this, honey, but the, uh, they're not our age anymore. So anyways, um, it's nice to see that department fully staffed and the guys and gals have been sort of stretched thin. And it'll be, uh, once we get these three new people, um, trained up and ready to go, we'll be back to a more normal staffing. I wanted to say that uh, Ralph uh, Burwell, who is the district resource officer, was um, uh, fully and genuinely complimented by a superintendent on the job that he does generally, but certainly the job he did with Safety Town. So it's a pretty cool thing. The Elks makes you want to join the Elks, I guess, but they're, uh, they get backpacks for these kids. So when my wife and I were Safety Town for 25 years, about 25 years ago, um, gee, we never we never equipped them with backpacks. We had a little we had a little diploma and some smiles and goodwill. So it's really nice to see that the uh, they put together such a nice program at Safety Town. So enough said. We're done. What's that? Oh yeah, they have bike helmets for these kids. What's going on today? All right, I'm happy for them. Uh, they had 30-some kids, so if you had a kindergartner uh, to be a kindergartner this year and they didn't go, or they're going to be a first grader and they couldn't go last year and you missed it, shame on you because it's a nice program and uh, really glad that, uh, that the city and the school, Elks and other sponsors are making it happen year after year. So anyways, that's all I got tonight. Anything else, folks? Nothing further. All right, on with the show. Uh, council me uh, committee meetings tomorrow night and Wednesday. Wednesday's utilities. A couple things that'll be interesting. Um, don't want to get into it now because I've already bought about three quarters signed off. But we're looking at doing some things that would would free up some money in the water fund and allow us to tackle some of these uh, capital improvements we've been talking about without relying on federal and state funds. So. 
with having said that, thanks for uh, watching and listening, and uh, we'll be back in touch. I guess we're live streaming those committee meetings, aren't we? Um, council meetings, yes. Some of the committee meetings. All right. Have well, been if you if you hear my exciting droning voice tomorrow, the next night, we'll be working up here at City Hall. Of course, the meetings are all open to public, so it's it's uh, laws and ordinances tomorrow with some zoning stuff. Actually, it's about four things on that agenda and then two or three things on Wednesday for utilities. So with that, thanks and good night.